So there's the crank sitting in the bearing. I believe there is a tool to uh, press them out, which I haven't got. So a very gentle tap. Tight one. Okay, so it's a little bit tight. I don't want to trot it on the end of the uh, threads very hard. Obviously for obvious reasons. And I haven't got a nut on to go on there. That's missing at the minute. So the inside of the uh, crank is there. And that deep socket will neatly fit over the crank. Onto there. And bear directly on it. Right, there's our crank. No signs of damage to the flywheel side spacer. That looks good. There's no, no up and down playing that at all. Right. Should look at the crank again more closely later on. But in the meantime, I need to move things out of the way. Don't start to drop everything. Crank seal. Again, doesn't look bad. And the bearing. There's no in and out movement at all. And it's completely smooth when you rotate it. Obviously I'll change the seals. Um, that bearing feels good. Anyway, we'll see you later. So the crank seal needs to be pulled using a screwdriver or a dedicated seal puller, which I don't have here. So I'll have to find something in a minute. Right. Kit start ratchet. Christmas tree will come out when we pull the gearbox. That all looks in excellent condition. It really does. Right, we'll take the back brakes off and the rear hub before we uh, do any more. Now, there are little spring clips on the posts. I've removed one which sprang off into the uh, far distance so I'll try and find out later although to be honest you should replace them anyway given that they're holding the brakes on. These ones are very tight which is why it sprang off earlier. I'm not sure why. Uh, try and apply some downward pressure and then we'll hook it off. Try and stop this one. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Right, if I manage to prise these up on the pivot, hopefully that will slide off. So let's give it a go. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go in front of you for a little bit. And if that goes across like that, you probably can't see anything at all. Right. So with that leave it up, this should all come off. Ha ha ha. There we go. That'll do. So there's your shoes, metal protecting plates, spring. 
That was a struggle. Needn't, needn't normally be that bad. And then we have a backing plate, which is held by three screws. Right, and the back plate should come off, which it does. There's a, an O-ring seal there, which is in good nick. And spectacle seals there, which are also in good nick. So, let's turn it back that way. This has got a seal bearing. There should really be a dust cover in there. But there isn't one. I don't imagine it makes a blind bit of difference. Um, and then, had this been an earlier bike, there would have been an external seal, something like, like that. There would have been a, a rubber seal here. That must be internal on this one. Which is better for leaks, but less good for uh, access. Because if it does start leaking, you've got to strip the whole engine. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. That's our gearbox shaft, which we're going to be taking out in one second. In fact, we'll just do it now. So it shouldn't really be that uh, tight. Shouldn't. Famous last words. So... We're going to just give it a, it sounds loud, but I'm just tapping it. And there's your gearbox. Oh, your output shaft anyway. All of which looks in good condition, so again we'll check all that later. And that bearing has no in and out plate and is smooth. I think these bearings have been done either it's a very low mileage motor, which you know, given I know nothing about it, it may well be, or alternatively, it's uh, it's had all the bearings done, maybe when it got kitted. I don't know. Okay. Right, so we need to get the Christmas tree out. Primary drive, which is there. Held by that nut, which has got a lock washer. A locking tab, I should say, not a washer. So we need to uh, just gently knock that back. Like so. There's a washer underneath it as well, a specially shaped washer, which we'll have a look at in a minute. 17. So we have the nut. Special D-shaped washer. Well, it's not D-shaped, but peculiar shape, really. And then our lock washer. And then I'll turn you round for the next bit, because basically we're going to tap that that way. And I'll show you what happens. That centre shaft's going to come out. And inside there, there's uh, needle rollers, which turn beautifully. Lovely. Right, okay, so I'll show you. Let's hope you can see it all. There we go. And there they all come. Make sure you get them all. Again, they're well greased. So I don't think this has done many miles. I think this thing has been rebuilt. 
maybe when it's kitted, and then it's nipped up very gently early on. So really, it's in excellent condition. Get our shaft out. And there's our Christmas tree, complete with bearing in the middle, which again we know is running beautifully. Again we'll inspect everything more closely in a minute. And that's your case empty. There's your... Can you see that? Yeah, you can. There's your seal. Internal. Now that would have been on the other side on earlier bikes. So we need to get rid of that seal. We need to get rid of that seal. And then we need to clean everything up. But I don't think I'll be replacing any bearings. I'll change the seals. I'll change the gaskets. I'll replace, replace the brake clips. But otherwise, I'm not bothering. So there's our spectacle seals, and then our main seal, which again is nothing wrong with any of those, and a little seal over the uh, brake pivot, which is slightly squashed, but again, doesn't really do much. Right, all good. So we need to replace our seals. Which is easier said than done, particularly this one that's down in here. I shall give it an exploratory pull, but I'm not hopeful. Now I'm going to have to get a proper, a proper uh, puller on that. So let me go and find something suitable. Right, I've just got a flat blade under the seal, tapped it in. And I'll give it a little tap out. That's one out. Not the correct tool, but uh, it's what I've got. So flat, a flat bladed screwdriver will do it. Right, I'll do the other seals. Got one in there and one on the other side, and then I'll bring it back. Right, the seal is out. I borrowed a seal puller, but I couldn't get it in, so I had to result, resort to the slightly more brutal method of getting a screwdriver into the seal and then getting it spinning, and once I got it spinning, it was fine, it pulled out. It was quite hard, unlike the crank seals, which had obviously been replaced at some point, so I suspect that was an original and the other ones have been changed. So, a quick look at the cases. And our carburetor mounting point area is perfect. The screws for the, uh, the threads, I should say, for the carburetor mounts are both perfect. All the other screws are good. Studs are good. Head studs are good. The bearings on this side are SKF. SKF. There's no in and out movement whatsoever. I suspect they were changed when the kit was fitted. And that's not been on long, as we will have a look at in a minute. So I'm not going to change the bearings. The faces, seal faces, are all perfect. The inside of the cases are like new. And the most important bit, I don't know if you've got to see that, our rotary pad. Again, it's like new. It's completely unmarked. And... My initial thought that maybe it had been opened up slightly was wrong. It's, uh, it's completely standard. So, that side case is ready to go. Let's get the other one. This one, again, everything's perfect. Ignore the grease, that's where the spring was seated. But again, the fact that that grease is there holding the uh, spring, kickstart spring thing, which has fallen off. The fact that that is still there indicates to me that this engine hadn't moved far. 
The uh, flywheel side bearing is good. Again, solid, lovely and smooth. All the rollers are perfect, no marking whatsoever. I won't be changing it. Normally, I would, but really, this is just so good. It'd just be wasting time and money, I think. You may disagree, but to me, these look absolutely bang on. And uh, what's the point of spending money when you don't have to? So, the cases are good. Let's take a closer look at the crank. Now, we had an exploratory pull on the crank when it was off, and there is no movement in that at all. Lovely and smooth. The next important areas, of course, I'd be worried about would be the threads. And they're all perfect. In fact, let me just get the macro lens out again and we'll take a closer look so you can see what I'm wittering on about. Right, starting on the uh, clutch side. The slot for the Woodruff key is perfect. Threads are perfect. And then our bearing sits here with the seal. Now there's very, very minor marking there. I don't know if you can see it. But certainly nothing to worry me. So that will be going back in. It is just discoloration. Can't catch anything in your fingernail. So let's have a look at the uh, flywheel side. Again, the threads are good. It's minor discoloration again, right at the very end of the crank there, but that's the main taper. So I'm not bothered about that. It's very, very, I don't know, let me just move you up slightly because you can't see what I'm talking about. And then again, we've got very, very minor discoloration where the seal sits. And then that's your collar that sits inside the uh, needle roller bearing on the flywheel side. Again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. You can see it's moved, but not very much. And in the small gap, let me just move you again slightly, the small gap you can see between it and the flywheel, which is there, is correct. And there is a special tool for when you're fitting them to space them out. Which that is perfect. And then if you were fitting a new sleeve, you'd need a special tool like this to knock it on with. And I believe some people use Sundance scripts, I haven't, but I believe they, uh, they work just as well. Right, so we've got good cases and we've got a good crank. So let's have a look at something else. Now it's hard to light a barrel, but it's very, very tiny mark there, just in there. Can see if we can shine some light on it. I don't know if you can see that. Possibly not. It really is absolutely tiny mount. And then the, the piston, again, I suppose there is the slightest mark down there, but and there's a very slight one there. But you can't catch a nail on any of them. They're just, they're just discoloration rather than anything else. So let's have a look at the rings. Right, the rings came off in one piece. There's no signs of anything having picked up on the side of them, that's for sure. So let's get them in and see. Let's come down a little bit with the piston. Now again, you probably won't be able to see that. But I'm just going to measure the ring gap. I don't know if you were to see. It is very small actually. Let me just uh, see if we can get a feeler gauge in there. Right, I seem to have a ring gap of around two thou on the bottom and possibly about one and a half on the top. 
So I'm going to have to go do some research and try and find out what the actual setting should be, because that seems a bit, uh, a bit tight to me, which might have given me uh, the problem of it trying to nip up, which it obviously has tried to have a very slight go. But the rings are certainly not worn, that's for sure. They've got good edges on them, the square, and the gap is small. So I'll just go and check what the ring gap should be on them, I'll see. Right, I've had a quick look online. And of course, uh, this channel isn't called Old Nuts Garage, without good reason. Because of course, when I just said it was uh, only 2,000, I actually meant... 0.2 milli, which is right for a PX125. So I'm assuming that would be the same as the Molossi because I can't find any info on the Molossi. So the top ring at 0.2 milli is fine. The bottom ring at one and a half is a bit tight. So I have filed the edge of the ring slightly got that to also 0.2. So it's at the tight end of the acceptable range for a PX125, which I'm assuming will be equally good for a, a Molossi. So we're okay. So the rings are good. The gap's good. The piston's good. The barrel's good. I will give it a very light home before I refit the rings. So the final thing... For this video, just check the head. Small amount of carbon in there, not a lot. I'll clean that out. The rubber O-ring's fine. There's no sign of any distress. I will not be doing the squish because uh, now I know that it's not been ported and the case and the. Uh, Intake's not been done, all the rest of it. Frankly, it's not worth the effort as it's going to be in a very low state of tune. So all that will just be cleaned up. Thread's good for the spark plug. No broken fins. So the top end is all going to be reused. Which is good. And that is it. For this particular video. So in the next video I should have ordered all the bits I need to put it back together. I'll have a quick look show the gearbox and uh, start rebuilding this thing. So until then thanks for watching and uh, please call back.